So here we go. The 10th seeded Florida Gators and the 7th seeded Minnesota Golden Gophers. A spot in the regional final against Louisville is on the line here in Austin, Texas. Kylie Miller, who has been injured, has come back. The setter will start this off. They're going to replay it. I'm not sure what happened. Serving for the number 14, Kylie Miller. Mulligan to start. And here we go again. <laughs> Pump set goes out to Paige Hammonds for Florida. Allie Gregory, the libero, will bump set Hammonds again. And there's the presence that Minnesota brings at the net. Well, and you're, you're going to see Florida work on tipping that ball over the top of the block to get the off blocker in trouble. But if they don't tip it high enough, the Minnesota block is big enough they can hang and just throw that ball back down. Fair Hall with the pass. Holly Carlton with the block. The defense for Minnesota stepping up. Early in the match, but they make a nice read. Morgan makes a fantastic move here. Gets off of one foot and able to press that ball back into the court. Minnesota had just a battle in the second round against Creighton. They actually had to fight off two match points in the fourth set by Creighton to make it here. You want to talk about an unbelievable match. I mean, that was another one where anything absolutely could have, but didn't happen, up and down. What a battle by Creighton. You have to give them credit for what a hard match they played. How much do you think playing this grueling Big Ten schedule got them prepared, though, for a battle like that? Well, for sure. I mean, it, it's so tough night in and night out. There's really no nights off, and it's hard to play. Every venue is packed, so you're, you're used to just kind of getting beat up all the time. You're, you're used to being there. Yeah, they finished tied for second in the Big Ten, went 17-3, and three, which is impressive when you're playing teams like Nebraska, Wisconsin, Penn State, all those big names multiple times in a season. That's right. Rachel Kramer. You can't miss her on the floor, the tallest player in Florida Gator history at 6'8". But I just, you know, she's long, yes, of course, but I like it. She gets her arm up and is available, and she gets on it, and she pulls the trigger pretty quick. So while it's high, she's still fast on the, on the ball. Kramer helped this Florida Gators group finish tied for first in the SEC. They got a share of that SEC title along with Kentucky, who made it to the regional semifinals. Kentucky got the automatic qualifier, though, because they beat Florida twice in the season. The SEC does not break ties in volleyball, so a share of the conference championship for Florida. And she can be so terminal. It's really again, you see that Minnesota actually has three blockers there on a perfect pass. They're like, okay, we know where they're going with the ball here. They start in this bunch. They all kind of jump into the seam. She's still able to hit over the top through the block. Too much on the pass. Point Florida. That's a rare passing error by CeCe McGraw, who's one of the best defensive players that I've seen this season. All Big Ten first team selection. Donna Rollins on the left side. Donna Rollins, just steady, steady player. She's got tons of range. You see, you're going to watch her arm move in a lot of different directions. Her arm, her wrist and her game just expand throughout the course of the match. A lot of, lot of different shots, and that's what makes her pretty good. An All-American honorable mention last season, All-Region Freshman of the Year last year.
Montserrat goes to Thayer Hall. And the block has an answer for it. Again, that's the second time Florida's looking to tip over the top of the block. Minnesota's just waiting for it. You see them here, they hang a little bit, see it, and then throw the ball back down. And keep in mind, as we said, Thayer Hall has not played in a match since November 30th against Texas a and Did not play in the first and second rounds out with an injury and really hasn't jumped in the two days of practice that we've watched. Yeah, and that, that's significant. It takes a minute to get going. You see her messing around with her little knee brace there now. And finding that rhythm, find it back, find her, her flow, find her swing. Paige Hammonds coming out of the back row. Miller back to Rollins. Reagan Pittman tips over the block. Lauren Dooley on the cleanup. Any overpass, a ball that's coming over the net. Just want to be super smart with it. Avoid the net. Be know where you are on the court. She just cracks that ball. Nice play by Julie. And what a nice surprise she's been. Only appeared in 11 matches last season. And here she is leading the team in blocks. 1.06 blocks per set for the sophomore. <laughs> Rollins says I'm a sophomore too. I got a little something. <laughs> I got something for you. And this is the speed. They sped up this ball a little bit more to the pins, especially with Miller back running the offense. Hard to close the block when it's fast from all over the court, not just on a perfect pass. This Minnesota offense has fluctuated. They've been in a 6-2. They've been out of it. Then Kylie Miller got injured. She was out for 13 matches total with a concussion. So they were using Bailey McMiniman. I would imagine that would be hard as an attacker to try to find your rhythm when you're moving in and out. It is. It's, it's hard to find a rhythm in a 6-2 no matter what. It has to be consistent. The flow needs to be consistent. But, that, you know, the Gophers did such a nice job during the course of the season. season. They were winning. They were winning and yes. kind of battling through some things and piecing it together at times. So that's what was so impressive, I think, about them. And now, heading into the tournament, settled into this 5 zone and see if they can work on it and peak at the right time. Miller spent three seasons at UCLA before transferring into Minnesota this year. They shanked a couple. Hey, I like the pace on the ball with the Florida serve. They served this ball tight. I was thinking about this when I was watching them in practice. Just how aggressive they are. Ball just kind of on a rope. <laughs> Alexis Hart, that's kind of the power that she can bring on the left side. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see a lot of that from her. She likes to hit. She likes to hit hard, and especially out of system. You see her weight. She's deep, way 14, 15 feet off the net on a ball that's off the net so she can keep that ball in front of her and see the block. A shot from Hart. Hammond's attacking from the back row. Look at Reagan Pittman. What a dig. I've seen that all season. I saw her lay out for a pancake once. I saw her dishing balls. Watch this dig by the middle blocker. Not just a great dig, right on target. Make her run their offense. I mean, she's added so much to her game. That's a middle. That's a middle. <laughs> That's a middle. I love it. Part with enthusiasm. Starts off with a nice dig by Sam, and he's just kind of balanced, not moving. While she's digging this ball, digs it straight up to Miller. Transition for a huge strike by Hart. Oh, Rollins 
Lopez has to hustle over, excuse me, Taylor Morgan. Oh, that's tough. Another fantastic dig by Pittman. Hustle to save that ball, and just no communication between uh, Miller and Sammy. Just a little bloop over the net. Fair Hall in the right spot, digging this ball. It just goes a little bit long. Overpass. Again, Morgan smart with her feet. Shuffles over to get that ball on her right shoulder. Make a nice swing. Paige Hammonds to the corner pocket. I love the heat by Hammond's ball. She goes after it. Every time she's swinging, she's swinging high and deep and hard. Able to score in that back third of the court. Paige Hammonds has been one of those players that whatever Florida needs, she will do it. Oh, I can still see the steam coming off the court from where that hit from Taylor Morgan landed. Perfect pass, another perfect pass. This is, this is what helps the Minnesota, 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 Minnesota balance Minnesota. attack. Handling the ball well so they can set the middles and the pins whenever they want. It has just been back and forth. This whole opening first set, we've only had three total errors. No unforced errors. The placement on that by Paige Hammonds, wow. She heads into that cross court and just keeps on rolling with it. You see her with a sharp, she leaves the screen. You can't even see her. Step close, keeps going with it. Hard four to four. No one's home. Mary Wise recruited Paige Hammonds for that swing, for her arm. And when she got to Florida, Coach Wise told us she's the best freshman passer I've ever had. It was a great surprise. <laughs> Minnesota again with another miscommunication there. A nice cover. They just have to continue to work on being consistent with what they're doing, communicating wise. Hello, Florida block. 6-8 is a pretty big block. Florida hits 15 first with a big block from the Gators. NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with the national semifinals beginning this Thursday, December 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. I've seen that Florida fan a lot. He's got the pins of all the different schools on his hat. You gotta love it when, when people travel. Yeah, made it all the way to Texas. That's right. I love it. <laughs> Pretty even match so far. Both teams hitting over 300. It's been solid volleyball. Has been. Oh, ball run after that ball. Got to be careful. Not want to hurt herself anymore in the stands. As we said, Hall did not play in the first and second rounds. Then for the first time, we're seeing her wear this knee brace on her knee. Florida just says that she's dealing with an injury. Nice play by Montserrat. Heads up play by the setter. High off the block, she's smart with it and just kind of throws it down, gets fired up. I got to see Florida in person really early on in the season against Stanford, and the decision making for Marley Monterey was just not there quite yet, and Florida didn't have their offense going. And it's going now. It is going. I love how she distributes the ball. She moves it around. It's definitely developed over time, and she's playing at an extremely high level. Here comes 
Stayer Hall. Don't worry about my knee, it's fine. Big swing by Hall. This is what she does. This is what she provides for the team. Fantastic vision. It's not a perfect set. She's off the net. She can still score. Look at Florida go. A 5-1 to one run forces Minnesota to call timeout. This Florida Gators group, they were really tested early on. We mentioned they played Minnesota back on September 7th. They also were tested by Stanford. RPI is at 7. Hitting percentage pretty solid, seventh in the nation. Yeah, I mean, they have done they have done what they needed to do. And, and we talk about this all the time, how important scheduling in the non-conference is. You want to play tough teams. You want to learn a lot about yourself. That's what they did, and they were able to continue to grow and get better because they you learn about your weaknesses. So earn their RPI. They've done a fantastic job in season. This, this is a team. This is a pretty dangerous team that I, I think a lot of people weren't we're giving enough credit to early on in the season. Yeah, they've played a lot of top 25 teams this season, and that experience pays off. Here's their schedule. I mean, look at the names on there. Stanford, Louisville, who is a regional final team, we can say. Yeah, they are. Kentucky, Missouri, they played Kentucky twice. They lost both of those, but they both went to five sets. And yeah, they're paid. That's paying off because they were tested. They went and finished tied for first in the SEC. They get a top 10 seed. Then, you know, in the tournament, we have a team like Pitt who didn't play the toughest non-conference schedule. Their conference schedule really didn't help them out. They only lost one match. It was to Penn State, but they didn't get a top four seed because of scheduling. And, that, and that's it. And that's, that's the difference. And people don't understand there's so many factors involved, but that's part of it. That's part of the equation. It prepares you and it puts you in a good spot. Minnesota just has to play in the big ten, so no big deal. <laughs> they are home. Now a six to one run for Florida. Powering that ball through the block. You know, if there was a way she could play today, she was going to do it. So I'm not surprised. Oh, I for mean, sure. She wants to be here in this regional semifinal. Yeah, I, I pretty much had no doubt, <laughs> no matter what. But uh, it is nice to see that she's cleared and, and able to play. The last season as a freshman in Florida just came in, and they asked a lot of her. They wanted her to be a six-rotation outside hitter, and that is a lot to ask of a freshman. She ended up missing seven matches with a back injury. If not, she probably would have been SEC Freshman of the Year. And even with that injury, she, you know, she took a lot of the offseason off. She did not jump from January to May to heal that back. And look at her number improvement this season. That's unbelievable. That's all, a long time, a long time to not be playing. And, and the dedication and the commitment it takes to come back from that and the focus, the maturity is, is huge. Like, it's so impressive to see those numbers. Seventy Samini flew out of the back row. And we talked about this before. This is what this is what Minnesota needs. They need Samini to have a big night along with their balance. They need to be able to rely on her when it's time for a big swing and a big kill. That's just her first kill. Send it out to Alexis Hart. Megan Pittman into the block. Miller will bump set Hart. Oh, what a great rally and a great swing. Man, you're asking a lot from these outside hitters. The ball's kind of all over the place. Just popping it up left and right. Out of system swings. That's what's going on right now with the outside hitters. And Hart comes up with it. Hart five kills, no errors. Lauren Dooley just got stuck. And you're going to see that block scheme and that rotation where she's not really going behind. They're going to set her in front. So Minnesota block is going to pinch down have two blockers right in front of her and be ready for that on a perfect pass. 
four blocks right now for Minnesota in this opening set. That's significant. I mean, that's that's a high number, and they they do a nice job reading and reacting. And again, that's a that's part of the scouting as well. You know, where are they going with this ball right now in this rotation? What can they do? Eighth in the nation in blocks per set, coming in at 2.85. That is Minnesota. As we mentioned, they've already been tested. Fairfield, no problems in the first round, swept Fairfield, but then Creighton, five sets. Man. It Two match crazy. points. It was absolutely crazy. I, I was watching this match after uh, the match that I, I called right before that, and the way Creighton battled and the way Minnesota came back was just, it's just one of those things. That's what the tournament's all about. We've got three of the teams in this regional coming in, had to play in five sets That's in the second round, and Minnesota was one of those. And I, I was shocked that they pulled it out. I couldn't believe they turned it around, but man, they, they absolutely did. I mean, it's shocking too when you look at the stat sheet because Minnesota hit 141 in that match. But then you look at Creighton, they only hit 110. Right, there you go. You know if you're Creighton, you're watching this going, oh, we uh, had two match points in the fourth set. It's painful, you know, when you, when you have it and you, and you it slips away, that's yeah. tough. And then Creighton, to get over. Yeah, Creighton, their hitting percentage in that fifth set, negative 038. sides of the net, but I like how the block, the block touch is involved. They're not just stuffing balls right now, but both sides of the net, slowing balls down, allowing the defense to play, transition back. Yeah, there's so many times the block affects the rally so much, but you don't see it show up on the stat sheet. Exactly. Now serving for Minnesota number 21, right here. You're going to see in this rotation, Carlton's going to just sprint all the way across the court to hit this, this back set. She likes to get the ball to her. They can disrupt it with a serve, but sometimes she just gets by it. Oh, and Allie Gregory just had to dive forward. Couldn't quite get there. It's an ace for Reagan Pittman. And a fantastic serve right in the line where Carlton's going. So they're trying to pass the ball. Five to one run by Minnesota, looking to tie it. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Paul gets a nice swing. Pittman almost comes up with it. Yeah, she almost does. Almost comes up with it. I love her game. Reagan Pittman, she is tough. Playing to 25, you have to win by two. Man, hard getting that ball just off the top of the tape. A bump set from way off the net by McGraw. Still going hard. I tell you, hard likes to go hard, man. <laughs> She's afraid of no challenge. I respect it. Played middle and club, and here she is as an outside. Big swing by Carlton, I love her range. She's gotten better over the course of the season as well. Watching her hit earlier on, a lot more seam cross court. Now she's got a lot of range down the line. You know, her first two seasons were at North Carolina, and she was hitting, playing right side, and setting. So it's a different role that she's had to find herself in at Florida where she doesn't have those setting duties. That's right. And sometimes it, it helps. It helps you just focus on one, and now I can get better at this, and that's, that's what we're seeing for sure. Minnesota calls timeout. 
Florida two points away from taking the opening set. Winner of this match is going to move on to the regional final to take on Louisville, who is celebrating somewhere right now, right, in Austin? I mean, you've got to be. <laughs> They're celebrating, but you know what? Knowing uh, Coach Busboom Kelly, they celebrated for a little bit, and she's like, hey, we got to get to work. Yeah. It's not over. We are, we have not, we're not done yet. Yeah, unlike basketball tournaments that we're used to seeing, there's no day off there's in no between. Day off. I mean, they are playing tomorrow. It's on. At 8 Eastern, you can see it on ESPNU. Went to a fifth set. Louisville took the first two opening sets, and then Anna Stevenson sealed the deal. They have knocked off two seeded teams. And they've done it without their star, Melanie McHenry, who was lost in October to a knee injury. I tell you, that team is, is balanced. They're well coached. They have they have weapons, but it's really more about the fight. You know, I, I, they have a couple of big weapons, but it was more about scrapping and following the game plan, um, executing at a high level, and, and not getting rattled, which was super impressive. And that starts with their coach, Danny Busboom Kelly, who as a player was all of those things you just described, the scrappy, the tough. Absolutely. That's what got them through. That's, it was a lot of fun. Biggest upset in the tournament so far. And now one of these teams has to go face a Louisville team that's riding high. Taylor Morgan in the middle. She is just so fast and explosive off the floor. I love it. She's just always available and ready, ready to be set. Those perfect passes, of course, are allowed to happen more easily, but I, I just love the speed of Taylor Morgan. In the Rachel Kramer on the slide. She has worked so hard on adding that element to her game. She's, she's hitting at a high level. Five, six kills now, zero arrows, hitting 750. And it's nice to see her expand the variety of sets, her game, and the ability to play at a high level. Oh, and they're going to say Thayer Hall was in front of the three meter line when she started that attack. Still set point for Florida. Yeah, it looks like she just got her toe on the line. You can jump from behind the 10 foot line and land in front of the 10 foot line, but you cannot, the three meter line, excuse me, you cannot step on it or in front as you're attacking. Adonna Rollins. Minnesota has some explosive pieces. They do. Now Florida got themselves in a little bit of trouble sending a free ball over the net, and they're able to run this fast ball to the pin, and Monterey's not even able to get back there to block. Yeah, so Florida is going to call timeout, because while it is still set point, Minnesota is right on the Gators' heels. They're right there, and, and it's, they have the momentum, a little bit of momentum, a couple of points. You know, of course, Mary Wise wants to slow things down, talk about it a little bit, hey, you know, settle the team down, be smart with what they're doing coming out of this timeout, because she knows very well that it's far from over. This is kind of what we expected from these two teams, just looking at the stat sheet alone, because their numbers coming into this match were so similar. I was I actually had to double check to make sure I was looking at the di a different team. I know, it's it's kind of incredible looking at it, kills were set. Hitting percentage, they're about even. Blocks, I mean, it's really kind of crazy. You're right. Evenly matched team on paper, and I, I would say physically as well. You know, they both have physical players that can attack the ball. Setters, very good setters on both yeah. sides of the name. Libros, I mean, it's really a very evenly matched team. People are asking me all along, what do you think? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. I got nothing. I don't know. It's going to be a battle. They also have those veteran players who know what it's like to be in this environment. They can keep the team calm. I haven't seen either team panic in this set. Well, they both have experience. They yeah. both have been there before. And that's that's huge for the coaching staff and for the players as well. As well. It trickles it trickles down from the staff to the veteran players and then, of course, to the other classmen. So they've been here. They know what it means. They get it, and they just have to take care of business. Set point for Florida. A 
much better pass from Allie Gregory. And Rachel Kramer does it with a tip. Florida takes the opening set. That's Rachel Kramer one more time, tipping over the top. That's what they need to continue in the next set. So the dancing queen of Florida, Rachel Kramer, is going <laughs> to teach me a dance move. All right, so what are we doing today? All right, we're going to do the floss, the space signature move. Yeah. All right, <laughs> we're going to arms out. Then we're going to thrust sideways, arms back out. Move the arms to the other side, thrust. And then move over. Oh, and yeah. Keep going. Am I doing it? Oh, yeah. Crushing it. See if she can crush a quick set and also floss. <laughs> Rachel Kramer was such a good sport. So when she was being recruited to Florida, Salima, the coaches saw video of her dancing and they're like, man, she's got really good feet. Oh, I believe it. And that's that's yeah. a big part of it. But uh, <laughs> what do you think about your feet? How are your feet? Well, unfortunately, they didn't have to move during that dance point. move. So. Yeah. <laughs> she's had 30 kills, only two errors on 42 swings in the NCAA tournament. Wow. Hitting a cool 6-6-7. What a weapon to have for the Florida Gators. Really unbelievable. <laughs> On the dance floor. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. And that first set was so evenly matched. The teams were both so, played clean volleyball in that first set. They really did. Hitting, hitting over 300, both teams, 15 and 16 digs apiece. Is, it's about the match that we expected. Only two unforced errors in that first set combined. And there's a long swing from Paige Hammonds. Ah, gets another shot and she's blocked. Block number five for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Taylor Morgan is fired up. We watched her kind of shift to the right side on that, that pass that's off the net. So she's already in place, ready to close the block. And an ace for Kylie Miller. Got that lucky roll off the top of the tape, my least play, favorite play in volleyball. But it's okay, it yeah. is what it is. <laughs> Four straight points for Minnesota. Oh, there's a collision. Alexis Hart and CeCe McGraw tumble over each other. And Taylor Morgan just keeps the fire going. Looks like everybody's okay. Mary Wise is going to have to call timeout. Five straight for Minnesota. Golden Gophers feeling it in the second set. Florida took the opening set from Minnesota, and now the Golden Gophers are having something to say about that here in the second set. Five straight points to start. Get out of here. Get out of here. Finally, the Gators on the board. Holly Carlton. Nice swing by Carlton going cross court after she already went line. So you see them kicking all the way. A little bit more out to the pin, but she finds some space to work with inside the block. Good up from CC McGraw. Man, McGraw was so good in that rally. Well, that's it. She's in the right spot, reading off the block. You'll see her inside the block here, laying out for this big dig, and then coming, coming around again. With a huge one down the line. Keep it going, it's a lot. Free ball coming to Florida. Kramer. Kill 
number eight. That's what happens on a free ball. And again, with her length and her speed, it's hard to stop her, even if you know that's where the ball's gonna go. See Morgan's here. Rollins kind of pulls off the net a little bit, not expecting it. And then Florida follows it up with an ace. This is one of those mid-zone serves. It's not a short serve, but it's just a ball that's flat and drops in the center of the court. It's hard to perfect one of those serves. Or you can. It's pretty deadly. Donna Rollins. I feel like every time Minnesota gets a kill, I'm calling somebody else's name. That's exactly right. Yeah, we'll just go back to all that, that balance. They're a little bit off the net here, have forced to set her, but a smart swing by Rollins. Just chopping that ball at about 75% to the deep corner. Short serve coming from McGraw. That's where he's going to go to Kramer off of one foot. He is on fire right now. <laughs> Anytime there's a ball she can possibly get to her, she's going to fling it back there to her. That timing between Marley Montserrat's set and Rachel Kramer on the slide is so much better than it was when I saw them at the beginning of the season of the Stanford. And Rollins coming through with a big swing, a lot of heat from that, that swing for her. Overpass. Oh, oh, Pittman barely made contact with that. Pretty. She's so smart. It's ridiculous. This is like they run this slide. She just hits a little roll shot. Who hits a roll shot on a slide? Nobody. Except for Regan Pittman. She can do whatever she wants, <laughs> you know. She's a good volleyball player. <laughs> There, Hall coming right back with that. Again, she knows that it's really left side off blocker's responsibility. You're going to see Adonna Rollins come across because Samity's responsibility really is that deep ball. They're trying to get him in trouble there, and it works. Diving serve by Chanel Hargraves. Tonight, Watson in a nice position out of system. Rollins might want to think again about this ball that's falling into the net, where she has no room and can't really see the block in front of her. A little smarter with that swing. That one's wide. Rollins trying to move the ball around a little bit. Needs to steady out here. Let's keep the ball in play for a couple of swings. And get back into rhythm. There's an ace for Chanel Hargraves. Four points in a row for Florida. And this is the tough part in this rotation. If they can't get the ball to Pittman, they still can set Samity out of the back row. But if it's not even a, a pass up in the air, it's hard to hard to run off. There it is. Boom goes Pittman. <laughs> That's the ball they need. This is the timing. And man, if you can get Pittman the ball, when it's time to get a point, she's going to unload on it. touch. They say no, it's Boy, going to Minnesota. She was binding up for that one, going big. Going bigger, going home. Just missed the top of the hands. There, Hall is getting 
set a lot. Pittman ends that play, just surrounding this ball here. Watch her hands finish into the middle of the court over the net. Looks like Sokolowski's in. Giving Hall a little bit of a breather. Yeah, Mia Sokolowski, number nine in the blue jersey. There she is, and hits the antenna. Sokolowski was the one they called on in the first two rounds to help out against UCF, six kills, only hit 105. That's a tough, tough rotation for them. If they can't get, if Dooley's not gonna really get set behind, Minnesota Blocks knows where the, she's gonna be. And might set Hammonds out of the back row to get a kill. Five straight points for Minnesota forces Florida to call a timeout. Minnesota's had that balanced offense, but to go with it, their block has been great. Six blocks. It really has. They've done a nice job just reading and pressing over the, over the net. They watch their eyes and their vision. They're smart with where they are, committing when they need to, knowing what's coming in these rotation. But I like their movement and how they're trained blocking lines. That's what makes it such a good blocking team. Hugh McCutcheon has so much experience on so many different levels of volleyball. His teams are going to be well trained. They are going to be well trained. He's a, he's a smart guy. He's big into biomechanics, how they move on the court, um, really playing to their intellect and saying, this is where you need to be. This, these are the angles. You know, it's, it's pretty interesting to, to listen to him coach. And he knows what he's doing. I mean, he knows how to, he knows how to coach at the highest level. Yeah, has been with the men's and women's Olympic teams here in the U.S. He's actually the only coach to guide the men's and women's Olympic teams to medals. Yeah. That's impressive in itself. It's, it's so impressive. And, and if you get to know him as a person, he's a, he's a pretty cool cat, too. That's, again, the region coach of the year this year, too. Minnesota, just in this tournament alone, they have 31 blocks. Opponents have 13. That's impressive. That's a, it's a big part of their game. You watch them, they focus on it. They focus on it in practice. Uh, they're serious about doing it, and, um, and they're very good at executing. Donna Rollins keeping it moving. Golowski is blocked. And you go back to this perfect pass, you'll see Hart is just waiting on Dooley. They can push down, and that leaves Pittman to release and just get to the outside. Free ball to Florida. What will Monterey do with it? Goes to Lauren Dooley. Finally. Nice swing, nice swing by Bully, Dooley. You'll see Pittman waiting for her here. Hart and Pittman, but she's able to see the block and cut it to the right back to score. Unstoppable right now. Four kills. Monster swing on a perfect set. The ball timing gets all the way to the pin, and you're going to see Sokolowski just drop that left hand and get hit off of that outside edge of her arm. All four of her kills have been in this second set. With that 
acrobatics. <laughs> Big play by Gregory. Wasn't sure where this ball was going to go. And I love, she just flies around the court. She's going in one direction. She changes directions, just Certainly. dives all over the court. Jenny Rowland might want to see if she wants to pull her over to the Florida gymnastics team after that one. Allie Gregory has been such a great story because she's waited her turn playing behind CK. Caroline Canope, who was an outstanding Libero, and is now in that Libero jersey for Florida. Florida again looking for that tip over the top of the block, and the Minnesota block just kind of hanging, waiting for it, throws it back down. Like the third or fourth one already this evening. Lauren Dooley with a little bit of power on it. And it's been nice to see her. She's getting set more and more in the last few weeks of the season. She's up and available. Gets that arm going. She gets it going fast. An ace for Allie Gregory. Hugh McCutcheon does not pull the challenge card. Bumps that heart. I just love her on the system. I, I just am, am amazed at how she can hit the court from as far off the net as she is or where the ball is even coming from. She, she just does such a nice job of keeping the ball in front of her to see the entire court. You know, in that last match with Texas, we were talking about Micaiah White and how she has all the tools and the decision making is so good. We're seeing that from Alexis Hart. Doing the same, same thing. And if Minnesota's not stuffing a ball, they're getting a good block touch. This ball allows McGraw just to come in there and lay it up there like a free ball. Paige Hammonds sails it. Minnesota at 20 points. And Minnesota doing a nice job mixing up their serve. They're serving some short, trying to get Hall on the, on the floor, get Kramer out of the equation, anything they can to disrupt the offense right now. And they are definitely doing that, hitting o, negative 067. After the Gators hit 326 in the opening set. Allie Gregory again lays out for it, but it goes out of bounds. And a nice play coming all the way across the court by Stephanie Samity. And Rollins is able to transition with a beautiful place shot in the cross court. 4-0 run for the Gophers. <laughs> Off of the floor to block. It's like a weapon for Minnesota. It is. I mean, that's smart. It, it, Stephanie Samity right now is just looking for at the block. Am I going to skip high hands? Am I going to tool out of bounds? Doing a nice job, just not crushing the ball, but being really smart with it. Minnesota two points away from tying up this match. It's another tournament, turn of events. Every match has been just kind of crazy. Mary Wise sends in Paula Sarame to take the place of Thayer Hall in the back row. Huge up. Again, Rachel Kilkelly. Man, Kramer ends it, but Kilt Kelly was fantastic. Unbelievable takes by Kilt Kelly. Making some huge plays. Keeping this ball alive, saving it. And then Kramer ends it with authority. 
Oh, Phil Kelly just Go pulled over. back in time to let that one sail long. It is set point, Minnesota. Set point, Minnesota. We'll see on a perfect pass if they send two with Rachel Kramer, send two blockers with Rachel Kramer. Another kill for Kramer. She's actually, at 11. Actually, a nice touch off the top of the block. So Kelly's got to run that ball down. Plenty of time to do that, but an unbelievable job by Kramer. Thayer Hall subs back in in the front row for Florida. Set point, Minnesota. How fitting is it that it's Reagan Pittman who has had now five, all five of her kills in the second set. Minnesota ending it on an eight to two run. They just dominated Florida here in the second set, 25-14. Minnesota with a heck of a response in the second set. They take it from Florida 25 to 15. Reagan Pittman was a big reason for that. Had all of her kills in this match in the second set. And we're seeing a different Reagan Pittman than came in as a freshman for Minnesota. And a lot of that has to do with things happening outside of the court for Pittman. She found kind of her niche, volunteering with Three Rivers Park District, where she teaches fishing to the community. They do a lot of group activities. And actually, it was her grandparents who got her interested in fishing. I don't know if I hear a lot of volleyball middle blockers who love to fish, but no. Reagan Pittman certainly does. And she has just felt, fallen in love with this group at Three Rivers, and it's really helped her come into her own and brought her so much more confidence, and that's translated to the volleyball court. It's such a neat story. I mean, yeah. it's, it's so important, too, to be able to give and to see the what happens with that, see the results of that, and see how happy you, how you can make people happy. It allows you to grow as a person and become just a, a bigger giver even on the court. And it's cool to see her evolve and mature and, and take that onto the volleyball court as well. And she took it all over the volleyball court in the second <laughs> set. All five of her kills in the second set. She is just one of the most phenomenal players because she has fantastic vision. She has great volleyball skills. She can see the court from wherever she is. And you can see that set is kind of, some of them are perfect, some of them are not perfect. She can still score and find the score. And in the first set, she didn't have any kills, but I mean, she had some huge digs. She was passing well. Her serve really helped Minnesota. She, she does so much for this team in, in all of her skills, but also emotionally. You watch her get fired up, block some balls, turn around, look at the team. The team absolutely loves it, and they thrive off of that. For Florida, what happened? Because you go from hitting 326 in set one to hitting zero in set two. Well, they had some passing troubles. I think Minnesota did a nice job getting them a little bit out of system, forcing them to do something they weren't comfortable with in different rotations, and the Minnesota block stepped up. So it was a combination of a couple different things. They weren't playing as clean as they'd like to. They weren't handling the ball the right way. Um, had to force some balls to people that were making some unforced errors. So it's just, they need to clean up their side of the net, pass the ball a little bit better, and they'll be able to get back in a rhythm with their offense. So we will at least play four sets here. Winner of our match moves on to the regional final to take on Louisville, who, if you're just joining us, upset Texas. Unbelievable match. It was un it was amazing. <laughs> Florida starts out with a kill. That's a good sign to get back on track. Holly Carlton getting the job done. Sammy busting up the Florida block. I like this little play they run with Samity now. They it's a back two, kind of just a little bit closer to the center, not all the way out there to the pin. So they're not forcing her to run all the way across the court in rotation one. They just want to, hey, we'll just lay it back right behind my head and she can still score. 
Kramer, a little too far, had to reach back for it. And that was a result of a short serve. Again, clogging her up a little bit, forcing her off the net, forcing Monterey to be a little bit out of position, unable to connect. Hey, that's her first error in 16 swings. Uh, she has 11 kills. They are Hall. And Florida being smart with Hall, bringing her in and out, saving her a little bit, knowing that they need her to score at the net, get some big swings for them. And then taking her in and out to be smart with her body. Yeah. Yeah, Bayer Hall did not play in the first and second rounds with an undisclosed injury. This is the first time all season we're seeing her wear this big knee brace on her left knee. Ooh, I like that swing from Adonna Rollins. Smart, nice high swing. So scramble play here. A fantastic job by her when things aren't lined up perfectly. Shout out to Stephanie Samity for the set on That's that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Service here just a little too short for Minnesota. Part Raiders, Service. Florida has Mia Sokolowski in there and Paige Hammond's not on the floor. Hammond's in hitting in the negative right now. Yeah, she's struggling a little bit, so it, it makes sense. And it's nice that she has some options. She can give her a breather, bring Mia Sokolowski in, and, and kind of rotate those guys around. Lauren Dooley is so good at camping out at the net, waiting for a mistake. That's exactly right. She kind of just cleans it all up. She cleans up all the garbage there, waits for it, throws the ball back down, overpasses, and moves it around. She doesn't hit it straight down right to where McGraw is. She sees the defense and moves the ball around. No touch. Rollins looks like she's going for hands and misses just long. It's long from Carlton. It's a nice out of system set. To Carlton, she just cut a little too sharp. That first set was just like this, so back and forth between these two teams. Florida won it, but then the second set was all Minnesota. So Golowski using the block. And her teammates are fired up right now. Coming in, doing her job, getting a big swing. Scoring off the edge of the block. <laughs> Look how fired up her teammates are. <laughs> so Sokolowski rotates out, Paige Hammonds comes back in in her spot. Ooh, Love it. Pittman just going off the top of the block. Watch this ball, they just have to lay up there, so she hits it off two feet. Just like a two ball, but still has the vision to be able to see the block and skip it out of bounds. That's where he calls on Thayer Hall. There's a lot of energy on the Florida side right now. There is, and what I love about Hall, she has to handle the ball, she passes it. Puts the ball on the money, swing to attack with a monster swing. 
She can really do it all. That's why she's in there. That's why they rely on her so much. Allie Gregory with another ace. Florida has six aces. Hart, roll shot. Gregory sets up Carlton. Oh, the hustle. Minnesota doing everything they can to keep this ball alive, but Carlton's swing here in the sharp cross court. Sam and unable to come up with that third ball. not want to try to dig that. No, you don't. And look how fast this ball is to the pin. Hold the block and fire it out there fast to Hart. She gets on it quick. Carlton off the block. Florida's offense is flowing so much better in this set than it did in the the second set. It is. They're handling the ball well, but I like what Monterey is doing. She's she's moving it around, getting herself in a good position, and not just setting the safe set. Running away from the play, setting behind her a little bit, forcing some things, and putting up a nice ball. Thayer Hall. CC McGraw says nope. Samity, Florida in the net. And some big swings and some even bigger digs on both sides. A fortunate net, net call on the Florida side. I think there were three, at least three different people on Minnesota's side that set a ball with their hands on that last round. That's an excellent point. I've seen them train it, I've seen them do it in practice. He's big on having everyone be able to set a second ball. Smart play here by Monterey. Goes up with both hands, which makes it a little bit tougher to read for a middle blocker to read. Throws the ball down, smart time to do it. Miller very quickly to Taylor Morgan. Yeah, Minnesota handling the ball well right now. Perfect pass in there to Miller. And I like it. Morgan sees the block and cuts it just around it. That's Sokolowski, Reagan Pittman. And if you get an out of system swing, and Pittman's on the other side of the net, do not go hard in the cross court. She's going to get you every time. Well, that's her fifth block. Just out there doing her thing. Six kills, five blocks, two digs, an ace. Playing a lot of volleyball. It's your average middle. Solid. She has, she's taking some nice swings. 
smart with where she's going with the ball. This is because it's a perfect pass. Look at Rick Pittman kind of shade towards Kramer. Causes a slight delay in her ability to close the block. And so Kowalski's can hit off of the inside hand. Kramer with a huge dig. The Florida bench just lost their minds. Riley Fisher lays out for it. Pittman finishes it. Love to see Kramer with that dig. That's a right back. Huge dig. Florida just flying around. And Pittman coming through, seeing the defense. Sokolowski just moments ago was hitting in the negative. Three kills now for her. And that's the tip they've been wanting to execute this match. Over the top of the block, force Rollins to come in, force Samity to come up the line, and no one's able to get that ball. All three of Sokolowski's kills here in this set. A rare miss, long for Reagan Pittman. Timing looked just a little bit off. She was hanging a little bit in the air. Still wanting to take a big swing. Just missed wide. has already grabbed the green challenge card. He immediately went after it. First time we've seen a challenge in this match. Each team gets three challenges. If we go to a fifth set, they would both get an additional challenge. challenge. Looking for a touch on this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you see fingers move. Man, that's the, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a finger go back. These net cameras are awesome. They really are. Wow. I tell you, I've done a ton of matches this year, and it, it's hard because nobody's, not all systems are the same, not all net cams are the same, they don't have the same amount of cameras, so it, it's, it, it can vary a lot um, with what you're seeing, and these high-speed cameras, they make a huge difference. Because sometimes it's it's nearly impossible. It's, it's super fuzzy to see it. It's hard to see it. Oh. They said it was inconclusive. Wow, that's shocking. I mean, to me, you saw fingers move. I thought I did. Wow. Okay, well, Minnesota will have two challenges remaining unless we go to a fifth set. And I guess we stand corrected. Wow. <laughs> Florida leading here in the third set, 15 to 12. Well, Hugh McCutcheon lost his challenge and yeah, I, we, that's, that was kind of our reaction. That was a great reaction. <laughs> that was perfect. I mean, we kind of thought that too. Now, I we don't I don't know what they're looking at. Right. They have our camera angles, but do they have the, the slow? We don't right. know. So, to me, you can see fingers move. But anyway, moving on. It's moving Florida on. point. That's right. The Marley Monterey's reaction. The lucky roll, and she knows it. Sometimes that ball just skips, hangs onto the tape, and skips over the top of it. Florida has 19 aces through nine sets in the NCAA tournament. Very tough serving team. You know. Yeah, there is a touch. Well, they spend a lot of time on serving, and they get the radar gun out, yeah. they're clocking serves. 
it's not just how fast or hard you serve it, it's your placement. I mean, it's all the spin on it. It's That's not right. just about the aces. That's right. It's about the, the movement on the ball. It's about how it's coming over the top of the tape, where you're putting it, and you're exactly right. Florida is on a 5-0 run. Biggest match of the season, the regional semifinals. Louisville has already made its way, its very first appearance in the regional final. Who will they face, Minnesota or Florida? That match will be tomorrow at 8 Eastern. Danny Busboom Kelly up there in the rafters watching this one because her team's got to get ready, like you said, back to work. That's it, it's back to work. They're scouting, got, got themselves some food. It looks like a little Chipotle up there, maybe. Bring us some. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, they're watching, doing their rotations, scouting, get prepared for tomorrow. Yeah, it's a quick turnaround. It'll be 8 Eastern. There's been a couple of, I mean, de definitely Texas losing has been the biggest surprise of this tournament. I really thought Kentucky had a chance to yeah. move on to the regional final against Washington. No, that's fair. Uh, I did too. I did too. I wasn't expecting that. Didn't have a chance to see it. So, be interested to watch the replay, but. And after this match, we're not done. Over on ESPNU at 11 Eastern is when you'll get to see Stanford in action. That'll be the last site to get things going. Utah played them tough earlier in the season, and it's going to be it's going to be a good match. Look at Mia Sokolowski coming up big for the Gators right now in every part of the game. Kicks out, drops back into the court, knows exactly where Pittman's gonna hit the ball. So Minnesota has made a substitution. ID Miyabe, number eight in the white jersey, has come in, and they've also brought in a different setter in Bailey McMiniman, number 13 in the white jersey. Now McMiniman has run this team before. Remember, Kylie Miller, their starting setter tonight, missed 13 matches because of a concussion, and then it became Bailey McMiniman's offense. So they're just gonna try to up their blocking, change some things a little bit here, what they've been doing. Oh, and I think there might have been a double on that. I mean... <laughs> It was a questionable set, for sure. First time that we've seen McMinniman in the match for Minnesota tonight. it to the corner. Big, big swing by Hall. That's what she does best. Winds up the cannon and unleashes. And so it's, I guess it's Minnesota's turn to have the offensive struggles. We've seen Florida struggle. They dropped the second set 25 to 14. And they flipped the script here in the third. They have. And so many teams this year, it's, it's been really interesting to see some inconsistencies with some teams throughout the course of the season, even within a match. So teams are playing at high levels, and then they're dropping down. But again, there's so much parity right now. There's so many good teams that it's easy for another team to kind of take over. And it wasn't always that easy. It was like, OK, we're on a roll. This match is ours. We're playing at this level. We win. Wow. These huge swings, I think, are because of so many teams with so many talented players that are able to turn it around and, and flip, the, flip the switch. Rachel Kramer has just been a dominating weapon for Florida tonight. 11 kills, only one attacking error, hitting over 550. Man, and they have used her a ton 
And this is why, because she's she's not just hitting the ball in the same spot, in line, hitting cross court. Now she's really added this slide and gotten better at it over the course of the season. It's something they can count on on a perfect pass. You know, we've been talking about big weapons in this tournament. Rachel Kramer, definitely one of those weapons. Well, Cincinnati has a weapon in Jordan oh, Thompson. They and do indeed. They took the first set from Penn State right now over in the Stanford Regional. They're in action. There you go. We'll Crazy. See. We'll see how that one plays out. Yeah, so Cincinnati leading Penn State by a set. Stanford and Utah still to come at 11 Eastern over on ESPNU to wrap up our day of regional semifinal coverage. We're going to have coverage for you from today all the way through the national championship match next week in Pittsburgh. And slides in Gregory Page Hammonds out of the back row. Florida takes advantage, couple of tight sets on the Minnesota side and they're unable to get to any clean swings. Hart's tipping a lot of balls, she has to force the ball over the net. And Florida easily converts with Hammonds out of the back of the row. So Minnesota makes a substitution, Samity and Miller back in the match. Touched by Florida, point for the Gophers. Nice big swing by Hart. Point Gophers. Again, out of system. She cleans up a lot of stuff out there. Not just keeping balls in play, but scoring. done a much better job using the block as the match has moved on. They have, and you see Hart's hands are just facing outside the court. She needs to turn that left hand back into the court. She's over there, she's pressing over and, and expects it. Turn that hand in, she's gonna get a stuff. I mean, Minnesota has nine blocks in this match already. Taylor Morgan kills it. Minnesota just finding ways, trying to make their way back into it, forcing that ball to Morgan. Florida just three points away from taking the lead in the match. And Kramer can certainly help them do that. Absolutely. They can get Kramer the ball, man. And it's difficult to stop this ball. It's off the net, high enough. I love that Monterey still lays that ball high enough for her to be able to swing it. I mean, it looks like her shoulders are above the net when she makes contact. Yeah, they might be. <laughs> <laughs> At 6'8", she's already close to being up there. Yeah. That's a nice adjustment by Morgan. Ball that falls just a little bit short and wasn't quite high enough for her to get on. I like that Miller, Miller fires it in for her like that. But smart play by her to skip that ball off the block. Mayor Hall. Powered right at CC McGraw. Man. Can't even handle it. So much power behind this swing. Watch her just wind up here. Big old swing into the cross court. Set point, Florida. Riley Fisher lays out. Back to back there, Hall. And why not? Mayor Hall gets one kill, and she's got to get one in the back row, too, to seal it. Florida has taken a two sets to one lead in the match. Florida is a set away.
from a spot in the regional final to face Louisville. Mary Wise is in her 29th season as Florida's head coach, and she has the honor. She's the only female to have coached in a national championship match, and she's done it twice. Yeah, Mary Wise has done such a phenomenal job at Florida, and she's someone that all young female coaches look up to. What she's done, what she's done with her, her program. Look at the female coaches we've had make it to the regional semifinals, and there's a chance if Florida can pull this match out, there are going to be two female coaches facing off tomorrow in the regional final with Danny Busboom Kelly, her Louisville Cardinals already there. Kind of cool, kind of cool to see, and it's nice to see all the, all the coaches that are left and how many female coaches there are in the tournament. There were, the Hawaii Sub-Regional was all female coaches, a and like it was pretty crazy. Would be kind of neat to see these two face off in the regional final. Florida still has to get through this fourth set. Because you know Minnesota's not going down without a fight. Nope. Like that, Taylor Morgan. The first set in this match was so even between the two teams. Hardly any errors. Great volleyball. They both hit over 300. Then Florida tanked in the second set. Then Minnesota tanked in the third set. So who knows what's going to happen in the fourth set? You never know what's going to happen. But it's like we said before, they've both been here. Nobody even, no one seems rattled. You wouldn't know if you were just looking at both teams what's even happened up until this point. They're going to both keep battling, going at it, and we'll see what happens here. Minnesota has to win to force a fifth set. Long swing from Taylor Morgan. Yeah, I think she may have had a little indecision. It was that second ball. She may have thought about setting him, then she jumped a little early and had that ball out of bounds. Tough play. Off the Florida block. Now, Florida's really been working Rollins here with the serve, and she, she hasn't been passing perfectly. It's been high, off the net. But it doesn't matter when you have Alexis Hart out there to blast it off the block and able to score out of system. Little traffic on the Florida side, but their Hall doesn't mind. And then that's exactly what Minnesota was trying to do. So you'd like to see Taylor Morgan already be out there, hanging out, camped out on Thera Hall, because Rachel Kramer was completely out of the play. Thera Hall has looked pretty solid today. 11 kills, hitting 241, six digs. Did not play in the first and second rounds with an injury. She's not playing like she's in the for sure. Jumping well, a lot of heat. And of course, Taylor Morgan coming back. They just lay this up there, not even a fast one ball. Now they're just setting like a one and a half, hanging it up there for her to just see, see where the court is and hit over the top. She rotates out. Mia yeah! Sokolowski flipped a switch in the third set. She's playing well. I mean, she's, she's moved the ball around. She has good vision. This is a long, long outside. You can see her arm when she goes back to swing. Reach is high, top of her reach. Kramer with the service error. is given, she can take care of it. Well, and that's the thing. You'll see she doesn't even get a full approach. She's just kind of standing there. She passes this ball. It's not a great pass. She's standing here. Step close. I'm going to get a kill. Oh, great decision. Kylie Miller being aggressive. And the reason this 
This dump works. She wastes the last one. A ball is being passed. She's kind of just hanging out. Like she's going to set it. Hands go up. Last minute. Flings that ball down. An ace for Adonna Rollins. Fair Hall definitely trying to take some, some of that court away from Sokolowski. So if you're able to thread that needle down there, force Hall to move to her left and get Sokolowski out of there, you're going to have some success just like she did in the last one. They go back at her. Results in an overpass. Pittman on the slot. Money. That's a perfect serving strategy right there. That's exactly what they wanted to have happen. Hammonds, number seven, back at the board. So now they bring Hammonds back in. See if they can free up the passing a little bit more. Not on that one. Free ball to Minnesota. Alexis Hart. Way, well wide. Yeah, I think that ball was a little fast and a little low for her. So, kind of a wild swing there. Maybe she could have cut it off. A little miscue from the setter to, to Hart. Wow. What a pass by McGraw. Holy cow. She was flying across the court, just trying to take up some space. See, this ball moves and drops. She makes a perfect pass. Pittman, once again. Look at the dig from Pittman. Hall tips. No. Oh, and they get Minnesota in the net. Huh. Yeah, she's not complaining. She knows it. Yeah. Right on top of the table. From Samity. Locked. Timing a little bit off on that set, and Gators are there in a solid position, ready to block the ball. So many Samity's been a little bit quiet. Five kills. She's had 13 digs. <laughs> Much better on that one. Yo, that's, that's the like ball. Hard. That's the ball Hart needs. Look at that. I really like the speed to the pin right now. Again, this has gotten faster and faster as the season has gone on, and it's it's super effective for the Gophers. CC McGraw, that was camping on the line. That entire rally was just fantastic. McGraw with this huge dig right on the money. And you watch Hart, smart, finesse this ball, sharp cross court. Florida calls timeout. Minnesota leading 11 to 7. Minnesota challenging Florida here in the fourth set. The Golden Gophers have to win this set in order to force a fifth set and have a shot at that spot in the regional final. These two teams came in pretty evenly matched, and here's how this match has gone. Even on kills, the blocks have been in Minnesota's favor big time. They have been, and that's that's the difference in the match right now. Doing a nice job at the net, but of course, Florida with the aces as well. Only two service errors for Minnesota, too, and set now 76 serves. by Monterey there at the net. Tight, tight pass. She goes up there. Sets Kramer and just throws it down.
There's Stephanie Samity, number six for her. There's that back two again. She runs over there and just on the other side of the net. Nice little step pose, doesn't have to go too far. Cuts that ball across her body. This season has been really interesting for Stephanie Samity because Minnesota was in and out of the 6-2, the and they did a lot of different things. So for the first time, she was in a situation where in order to help the team, she needed to play less. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, maybe it's just me, but I just really feel like, and she's on the court the whole time. She has a feel, she has a flow, she's better offensively. Um, that's just my perspective. She has 14 digs tonight. She's working. And helping Taylor Morgan get up there to block. Couple of big blocks back to back by Minnesota. And you see Morgan's already over there. Waiting for the out of system set and Hall just goes right into it. Seven blocks for Taylor Morgan. set was going out. Definitely a little miscue there. They need to audible in that situation. When she's inside the court, maybe calling for a different set. I'm not exactly sure where the miscue was, but definitely not the right set. Six to one run for Minnesota. Seven to one run for Minnesota. Florida needs to settle down here, steady out their passing. Probably change the passing pattern a little bit. Yep, they're pulling Hammonds out. They can study out this passing. Big swing from Hall off the top of the block. This is a smart swing. Again, you see her winding up and just blasts off the top of the Maybe that extra rest really helps Thayer Hall. Maybe it did. We only saw her the past two days in practice, only played the back row, did not jump. They're still being smart with what they're doing with her. And I tell you what, she's playing, she's playing at a nice level right now. Sixth service error for Florida. I mean, the peaks and valleys in this match just continue. Minnesota was in a valley in the third set, and here they are on top of the mountain. <laughs> it's a funny game. This volleyball is a funny game. A lot of momentum. And it should be a lift on Prayer. Double contact is what they call. Florida calls timeout as Minnesota up 19 to 10. Neither team can get the consistency going. I really can't. I see their tough serving that's forcing the other team out of system a lot and unable to score, making a ton of errors or a blocking run by the, uh, the opposing team. Right now, Minnesota serving tough. Florida unable to find a rhythm right now with their attackers. Well, on Sunday, two of the top teams in the country face off in a rivalry game as number seven Louisville takes on number 10 Kentucky. The Cards have three straight wins over the Wildcats. ESPN's women's college basketball Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Louisville coming in at nine and one. They have that win over Oregon, who was number one in the nation. Louisville took them down. Louisville's volleyball team took down the number two seed in the tournament. Things are rocking in Louisville right now. You ain't lying. So who's going to meet Louisville in that regional final? It's looking like right now we're going to go to a fifth set. 
because Florida's got a lot of work to do if they want to win this fourth set to end the match. You're right. This is a, this is a big deficit. It, it's possible, but it's a tough one to get back from. And right now, Florida hit, hitting a buck 05, and you got Minnesota hitting 400 in this set. Danny Busboot Kelly wants to know who they will face tomorrow, and then it's a really quick prep. They're, they're kind of having that same conversation, looking at the box score, looking at what's going on, and saying, all right, what do you think? Yeah. What do you think? But what the staff is doing right now is they, they kind of designate, okay, you watch Florida, you watch Minnesota, let's scout right now. Take those numbers, and one gets tossed out, and one gets used. I've been there. <laughs> Too long from Rollins. Minnesota has had such scrappy back row play. They have. Kill Kelly has really been the highlight this match, laying out for it. Of course, Pittman just up there battling at the net. Rollins looking for hands or deep corner. And this is deep. Sokolowski. Man, I mean, she has really stepped up. Taking some big swings, starts with the dig by Hall, a nice rhythm play by Monterey. All seven of Mia Sokolowski's kills have come in the last two sets. Let's see if she can add on another one, yes! There it is. A little momentum coming the Florida way. Florida's defense stepping up. Riley Fisher, some big digs cross court. Takes a little bit off of that, that swing. And Rollins puts a little bit more on that swing. Sure did. I tell you, you look at her, you don't think she can, she can crush the ball, but she can. She's got some heat in that shoulder and can get on the ball fast and hard. Minnesota knew it. Some of the passing troubles continue for Florida. Sissy McGraw ready for it off the block. Florida in the net. Minnesota has four players in double figure kills now. That's what we're talking about. The balance, the offense. It's, it's really nice to see them move the ball around, spread the load, but it's, it's because of the ball control when they're passing out. They can do it. They hit the antenna, Point Minnesota. And Stephanie Samity is, by the way, is not one of those players in double figure kills, but she has 16 dicks. Right, well she's, and now she's playing some of those, those tips up the sideline instead of the off walker. So she's kind of crashing in there. They're freeing up the outside hitters a little bit more. Thayer Hall took everything she had and put it behind that swing. Another big swing by Hall here. McGraw's in a nice spot. I mean, this is where you want to be. That's a tough ball to dig. That's just on the edge of the middle blocker's arm. And it's set point for Minnesota. Set point, 
Paige Hammonds extends it. Still set point for Minnesota. Looking to force a fifth set. Paige Hammonds, Six kills in this set, and we are going to a fifth. When they need a swing and a kill, they're going to go to Pittman. She comes through one more time, and we're going to five. And now we have another five-set match here between Minnesota and Florida, and this one has been a wild ride. It has been... Florida's good, then Florida's terrible, and Minnesota's good. And now I have no idea what's going to happen in the fifth set. You know, this is this is a tough call. There's going to be a few factors involved. A, where, where are they going to start? Okay, so who are their hot hitters? Maybe where, what rotation are they going to start in to, to get them going off to a fast start? That's the key to the fifth set, right? you got to come out on fire. The other thing is, who's been here? Who on the court has been here more? What coaches have been here more? Of course. Coach McCutcheon, he has the experience, the international experience. But Mary Wise has been here a lot. She's been in this situation a ton over and over again. So, still hard to say, still hard to figure out, but we'll see who gets the momentum and starts off strong and fast. Florida six and two in five sets this season, Minnesota three and one. The Gophers won the earlier meeting with Florida in September, but that was a three set sweep. This has been a totally different match. And now it doesn't matter what's happened in the first four sets. It is about who can get to 15 points first. That's it, and it's gonna come down to the old cliche, who's handling the ball better early so they can run their offense. That's been the key. Good pass to start. They go to the middle and Dooley. Watch the pass. This is where this is where it's at. Passing the ball on the money. One on one in the middle. Vanisher. Alexis Hart has been a go-to all night, leading Minnesota with 15 kills. Both teams starting off nice, passing the ball well, able to run their offense. Allie Carlton with the tip. Oh, there was a pancake in there by CC McGraw, but just didn't get up far enough off the court. Smart tip by Carlton, forcing Samity to come all the way across. You see, that's her responsibility. Playing the tip. Hard ball to get when you tip it right down the line. I've loved Adonna Rollins tonight. Yeah, she's just been steady. She's been handling the ball okay, but really finding the court, smart swings too high or low emotionally and not playing all over the place, just pretty steady. 12 kills for her, one of four players from Minnesota in double figures. Kramer. To Rollins they go. Ball slips it through the defense of Minnesota. Nice high line shot. Kylie Miller probably wishes she could get that one back. Kill Kelly's right there waiting for it. You see Farrah Hall ready for her to just blast this ball. She chops it back to the to the corner. Miller can't come up with it. More kills than anyone on the floor. Thayer Hall has 16. <laughs> Service error. And Fairhall stepped on the line. Oh, oh, oh. Attack. You know, 
know, and that's one of those sets. She's done that twice already this match. If you haven't been doing it a ton over and over again, you got to find it. Where am I on the court? The setter has to find it perfectly. So that can happen when you take a little bit of time off. And we haven't seen her over the last two days, today and yesterday in practice. No jumping for her as she's dealing with an injury and for the first time wearing that big knee brace. Nice. That was a beautiful shot. The see McGraw come here, make that play. Man, a cut roll shot there by Rollins. Just a smart, smart play. Minnesota has served it 95 times. And they've only had two service errors, and their serve is bothering Florida. It is. It's getting them out of system, forcing them to do some things they don't want to do. Four-point run for Minnesota. That's a huge run in a fifth set when we're only playing to 15. It is a huge run, you're right. Mary Wise is over there. She's like, she's on them. She's not going to talk strategy right now. She's talking basics. This is what we do. You know, this is what we've come this far. We've come this far. And we know what we need to do to win. So we have to continue to stick with the game plan. Follow what we're supposed to be doing. Be smart with your swings. You know, it's tough. It's a frustrating moment when you have that kind of a swing in a fifth set like this. the numbers for Minnesota right now, the balanced attack that Kylie Miller has been running. Yeah, it, it's really going to make it difficult, and that's what's been stressing Florida a lot as well. It's hard to tell who they're going to set, when they're going to set them, um, especially because Miller, even if it's not a perfect pass, she's still able to run her offense pretty, pretty smoothly. So this, what you're seeing on the screen right now, is what's been giving them some fits. Minnesota is looking for its eighth regional final appearance. So Florida brought in Paige Hammonds for Sokolowski. Side of that, and Pittman does what she does. Sees the empty, empty part of the court, gets fired up. 14 kills. Thayer Hall's swing is long. She wants a touch. Well, they all do. They're calling for it. Rachel Kramer looks pretty, pretty sure she was right there underneath it. So Mary Wise will challenge for the first Four, time. She'll have three challenges remaining. interesting to see what happens here because we had a touch reviewed earlier in this match and we could see it hit fingers but the official said it was inconclusive oh they're looking at in out well that's out. wow that's yeah that's out so if that's the challenge I mean I'm seeing it right here again they're doing their best to see what they have on their camera on the replay system From our perspective, well, I thought I thought everybody on Florida turned around to the bench and was making the touch signal. Well, isn't that the same? You can. That's one in and out fine. touch. 
Oh, yeah, that challenge. is true. They've combined that now. Mm -hmm. So it could be one or the other. Still taking a look at it. See what he comes up with. The call will stand. Video goes You see, it's inconclusive. So now Minnesota is the first to eight. They will switch sides. Minnesota's been the one that's come out very steady in the fifth set, hitting 500, no attacking errors. Yeah, that's that's pretty impressive. And it's hard to do. Coming out in the fifth set, you know, when all the pressure's on you, you want to play the clean cleanest, the earliest. I mean, that, that's it. That's what it's all about. Florida hitting zero right now in this set. Only playing to 15, you still have to win by two. Rachel Kramer had a big impact early on in this match and has gone a little quiet. Trying to get them fired up, hasn't had the opportunities to swing at the ball. It's hard when you're in the middle and you're not passing, passing well. You, you feel a little bit hopeless. Yeah, it's like helpless, excuse me. So she's just trying to find ways, firing up her team as much as possible when she gets a swing. What a block! Sokolowski and Dooley teaming up. That'll get the team fired up. Man, look at the timing of this block here. Presses over, and Pittman hits right into Sokolowski. Big block. Rollins gets the touch call. <laughs> We'll see what their serving strategy is here if they try to jam some things up. Again, Dooley doesn't generally go behind. She might run behind, but they're not going to set her in this rotation. Their whole swing is out. Minnesota five points away from the regional semifinal. Florida trying to just mix it up, pull some blockers with running some different things. Trying to find their best swing. Winner goes to the regional final to take on Louisville. It's a piece of the Minnesota block. Florida's still battling. Hammond's mixing up her shots, tipping over the top of the block. That doesn't score. Comes back to her. A nice swing, high off the hands for the kill. That's an easy decision for Kylie Miller. Nice play by Kylie Miller. She doesn't do it a lot, but she does it at the right times. You see Dooley, they're pushing down, pushing down, waiting, leaving Pittman one-on-one, -on -one, and then they just leave, leave Miller all alone. but a beautiful set by Monterey. She's at about 20 feet off the net, keeps her in system, in rhythm, to allow her to score. Florida in the 
Man, Minnesota is playing like they remember last season when they lost. They were upset by Oregon in the regional semifinal when they had a shot to basically be at home all the way to the national championship with the national championship being in Minneapolis. That was a tough loss for them last year, and you know they can taste it. I think you're absolutely right. They know what this means. They understand how that felt last year. They don't want to be in the same situation, and they are they're playing with a ton of energy right now and fire. Florida has challenged. There was, they said that they were in the net, and Mary Wise is challenging that. Let's see if we can see it. Yeah, I think an arm came down. Yeah, it looked like an Dooley. elbow. Oh, I think Thayer Hall's hand. No, there's an elbow. And, oh, there's, yeah. there's a lot going on there. <laughs> <laughs> it's all up in the net. <laughs> Call is confirmed. Only Carlton in the net. Again, not unsurmountable, but a tough, tough road back here for Florida. Carlton. Rachel Kramer back in the game. Big swing by Carlton, who has had a fantastic week this evening. Oh, that hurts. That really hurts, because now Minnesota just two points away from taking the match. Florida calls timeout. The NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship coverage continues with the national semifinals beginning Thursday, December 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. For more information on the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. It's been a wild day in the regional semifinals across the country. Texas upset earlier today by Louisville here in Austin. So the home court advantage for Texas not working in their favor. Louisville was not afraid at all. I was very impressed. And now one of these teams, Florida or Minnesota, is going to go have to face that tough-minded Louisville team. It's true. They, they're going to have to face a team that now believes. I mean, they, they started to believe in that match. That's what Chris Bus Busman Kelly said. I saw my team start to believe that they could win. And now, man, it's hard to beat belief. Yeah. We will have that regional final for you, Matt, match for you tomorrow at 8 Eastern. I've only done 10 sets of volleyball today, <laughs> Salima. Don't give me that look. <laughs> or as our director, Matt Wilson, pointed out, nine and a half. That's, because Yeah. Or nine. Because the fifth set, you only go to 15. Yeah. Still get it to Kramer. Monterey just doing a fantastic job handling the ball. She was back row at the front row block as a jump with her, and Kramer comes up with a kill. Samity blocked. Watch out. And Fair Hall is fired up. Big block, look at the swing block move. I mean, that is textbook. Match 
Match Point, Minnesota. just yet. Still match point for the Gophers. She is in their faces right now. We have time. Let's go. Monster swings by Hall. Serena Hall. Samity can seal it. Minnesota won't be denied this time. They're going to the regional final. Eighth appearance in the regional final for the Golden Gophers, the third in the last five seasons. Huma McCutcheon coming through again. Fantastic job keeping their team in a good place, not freaking out at the end, able to maintain and come out to a fast start in the fifth set. They fought through some peaks and valleys in this match too. They lost the third set 25 to 16. Yeah, that was a tough set for them, but, but it's important to see how they're able to come back. This is just like the Creighton match where they're able to battle back somehow to stay resilient and leave those sets behind them. I mean, that's huge to be able to do. You don't want to be in that position, but if you're going to be in that position, to be able to come out of it, it's huge. Minnesota has stayed alive in this tournament in back-to-back -back matches through five set thrillers, and now the seven seed, Minnesota, moving on to the regional final to face Louisville. We will have that match for you tomorrow at 8 Eastern. You can see it on ESPNU. It is Minnesota coming out on top. Four different players in double figures for the Golden Gophers, and that's how they get it done past a scrappy Florida team. Minnesota, the winners, heading to the regional final here in Austin, Texas.